We now present For the Record. Welcome to For the Record. I'm Will Keneally, and Happy New Year. It's been a busy week at the state capitol so far. Lawmakers are starting to introduce legislation that they want to get passed before everyone leaves in the late spring to run for re-election. We'll actually see that tomorrow with Assembly Republicans providing us more details on a medical marijuana bill that could very well become law later this year. That's because Governor Tony Evers says that he's likely to sign that bill just as long as there are no poison pills included. Now, I mentioned that during an extensive one-on-one -on -one sit-down that we had. Here's more from that conversation. All right, well, thanks for sitting down with us. Appreciate yeah, it. Appreciate it. Well, uh, so, busy year, obviously, state budget. Um, for you, obviously, it's a little different. You don't get to pass laws, but you get to shape policy, certainly. Sure. Um, any big wins from this past year? Yeah, well, let's talk about the budget. Uh, the, uh, first of all, shared revenue was a huge win. Uh, you know, it took a lot of effort on a lot of people's parts, and including my staff and myself. So that was a huge win. I think affordable housing uh, was uh, a significant win. We've been able to fund uh, mental health in our schools at the highest level ever. And so I, I think there was, um, it was, you know, not everything I wanted, obviously, but uh, we were able to make some huge, uh, huge impact. And I'll use this as a small example, but affordable housing, half a million dollars, uh, that's like never happened before in the state of Wisconsin. So I think the, uh, I think it was a good budget. You know, obviously I wanted more for different things, but uh, at the end of the day, we compromise in a way that I think people in Wisconsin are happy about. So uh, we've seen, especially during the pandemic, um, you know, you trading barbs, especially with the legislature. Um, how have been some of those relationships been? Well, you know, it, it, it is what it is. Politics of the day are, are much different than it was eight years ago or 10 years ago. But, um, you know, the fact that all these things that I just mentioned, plus many more that, uh, uh, you know, kept the brewers in town, uh, the, all those things took give and take on everybody's part. And uh, and so, and frankly, I signed many more bills than I veto. And so I, you know, is this a, a perfect world? No, it's not, but I think, uh, I think we made some good progress and uh, uh, people of Wisconsin should be happy that there are several areas that uh, we reached common ground at uh, and that we need to celebrate that. Now, one of those vetoes has been um, twice now, that tax cut that Republicans have floated. Yeah. Um, they're trying to restart it again in the new year, uh, gearing the tax cut more towards retirees. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you'd be on board with? Yeah, it could be. I mean, I, you know, the, the devil or the details are really important. It, it could be a, uh, there's some kind of poison pill in there. But, I, you know, they know that my goal always is to provide uh, tax relief to middle class folks and uh, and, and hard working folks. The and ho if that bill c kind of works its way through and it ha it 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 you know I I'm open to it. Let's put it that way. But it can't be. A, you know I don't believe that uh, wealthier people in the state of Wisconsin need a tax break. If this is something that we can honestly call a middle class tax cut, uh, then I'd be very interested in it. Uh, what would it take to get you on board? Well, to tell me who's gonna, who's, who's gonna benefit from this. Uh, if it's uh, retirees that uh, have adequate resources in, in their lives uh, as a retiree and, uh, uh, and have enormous wealth, that's a problem. I think it should be, if we're going to focus on retirees who are, spent their lives working hard and uh, are maybe even struggling uh, in retirement, uh, then I'm before it. So we'll see. I'm open to it. I also heard that Republicans may be introducing a medical marijuana bill. Mm -hmm. um, would you be supportive of that? I know it's been in your budget recently. Sure. Uh, yes, I, I would. Again, if there's no poison pills, you never know. Uh, but uh, the, uh, you know, do I think we need to consider recreational marijuana, of course. I've been for it, so is the majority of the people of Wisconsin are, is for it. But if this is a step in the right direction, uh, let's, let's make it happen. Uh, we've been talking a lot about impeachment um, with the state legislature, obviously that would target uh, perhaps Megan Wolf, perhaps mm -hmm. the new uh, liberal Supreme Court justice. If that were to happen at this point, do you have a sense of, um, on your short list, who you would appoint to replace Justice Protestant, for example. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm not in that position because I think it's a ridiculous notion. You know, when, 
when people decide that uh, uh, you know, take Megan Wall for example, uh, they're accusing her of things that, frankly, the Wisconsin, uh, the, the the commission itself decided. It wasn't her, you know. So. These are, these are all, frankly, ridiculous notions, and so I, I don't worry about replacing somebody because I don't think it's going to happen. I mean, it's uh, ridiculous. The people of Wisconsin voted uh, Supreme Court justice in, and, uh, and they will make those decisions if they feel that uh, she hasn't done her job. She just got on the job. So I think the impeachment stuff is uh, baloney. Uh, we just saw the Board of Regents approve a funding deal, uh, trading off some much-needed funding uh, right. for the DEI positions. Um, how do you feel after that deal? I thought it was a rotten deal. The, the Board of Regents were uh, bargaining on things that had already been decided in the budget. We had a budget that said, whatever, 4% increase in, in wages, including the UW, UW system. That was already decided. I signed that into law. In addition, they had things in their budget that talked about getting rid of DEI. I vetoed that language, that lang and, that, and they couldn't override that veto. So to decide that things that had already been determined, the Board of Regents should not have been, uh, should, shouldn't have to have been bargaining on something that were part of law. And, and so I, I think they got taken to the cleaners on that one. That, that was, uh, sh should never have happened. So I know, obviously, they're put in a tough position, uh, but they're paid to make those hard decisions, right. certainly. Yeah. Um, do you have confidence, uh, especially in President Rothman negotiating that deal and the regents ultimately supporting that, knowing that some of them are your appointees? Do you have confidence? Sure. In well, I, my appointees, I, I, I don't make, I don't mess with uh, their decision making. In fact, I maybe talked to two of them before they, uh, before they made that this made the decisions to. Uh, to approve that, I made. I never told the person how to vote. Uh, I was on the board of regents, and I saw how that worked on the other side, and I wasn't going to continue doing that. So, I appointed really smart people. They can make those decisions, but and, and Jay is hired by them, and so I, and I think Jay is a good human being, and uh, uh, he'll he'll continue in, the, in that position. So, I just think it was dumb. It was not good policy uh, for them to negotiate on something that had already been decided. They let Robin Voss uh, run roughshod over them, and, and uh, they shouldn't have done that. Uh, so just quickly, obviously, you're a little bit more into uh, your first year of mm -hmm. your next term here. Three-term Tony? Are we <laughs> looking at that? Three-term Tony. I made no decisions. I, you know, as I, as I, I hope you're getting the notion that I, I felt this last budget went as well as it could have under the circumstances, and so I, things are going well. The state of Wisconsin is in the best financial shape they've ever been in, but it's way too early for me to make that decision. But uh, I feel good about where we're at as a state. Uh, and then briefly again, uh, do you, what do you think will be the biggest political headline of 2024? Of 2024, clearly it'll be around which, uh, which, which did the president win Wisconsin? Win in Wisconsin is a new, whether it's, it's going to be Joe Biden or, or, or Donald Trump. Clearly, I, I think that it should be Joe Biden. I think he's a, a quite an extraordinary human being. But uh, that's what it's going to be all about, is uh, what's going to happen at the national level. It is a, already a conversation piece. I think Wisconsin is going to be supportive of the pr present president. When we come back, we'll hear from the Assembly Speaker on some of his priorities for the new year. And later, we'll talk to a Wisconsin congressman about his recent trip to the southern border. We'll be right back after this. This portion of News 3 Now is sponsored by Madison Gas and Electric. Don't miss the Smith Brothers Factory Authorized New Year's Sale on now at Wanaki Furniture ETC. Select from many styles on our showroom floor or custom order the Amish crafted furniture that's right for you. Happy New Year! I know what it's like to perform through pain. If you're like me, one of the millions suffering from pain caused by migraine, Nurtec ODT may help. It's the only medication that can treat a migraine when it strikes and prevent migraine attacks. Treat and prevent all in one. 
Don't take if allergic to Nurtec. Allergic reactions can occur even days after using. Most common side effects were nausea, indigestion, and stomach pain. Relief is possible. Talk to a doctor about Nurtec ODT. This is Kathy. She's about to see her dentist. She's afraid. Not because of the drill, but because of the bill. A big bill. But Kathy doesn't need to be afraid, and neither do you. Thanks to affordable dental insurance from Physicians Mutual Insurance Company. It's easy to get this coverage. Don't believe me? Call or go online for all the details. You could even have this free information kit. This isn't a discount plan or preventive-only coverage. This is real dental insurance. It helps pay for over 400 procedures. That's a lot. I'm talking cleanings, fillings, crowns, bridges, root canals, even dentures. Bottom line? You'll have help paying for routine care and expensive major work. But if you want deductibles, forget it. There aren't any. No annual maximum either. Plus, you can see any dentist you want. Stop fearing the big bill. Start saving at the dentist. Call now or go to sendinfokit.com. Physicians Mutual, Physicians Mutual. Don't miss the Smith Brothers Factory Authorized New Year Sale on now at Wanaki Furniture ETC. Select from many styles on our showroom floor or custom order the Amish crafted furniture that's right for you. Welcome back. We heard from the governor on what he wants to get done, but much of that is contingent upon the state legislature and the powerful assembly speaker. We asked assembly speaker Robin Voss to recap this past year in the Capitol. And I also got to ask him a question that I've been dying to for the last few months. Here's more from our conversation. Over this past year, any big legislative wins that you want to highlight? You know, it was a great year. Um, we did an awful lot of things that we you think back, there's a, really a huge number. Number one, if you think way back, we did a deal on shared revenue, uh, biggest increase in spending in a generation. Uh, we had a housing package, which focuses on trying to get more housing in Wisconsin, uh, focusing on, uh, you know, starter couples and things like that. Uh, we did a bill that focused on our budget. Of course, that had more funding for everything from spending on health care to schools and, of course, worker training. That was good. Uh, we had a package that came forward of a bunch of different election ideas. Uh, those were good to get done. One of the things that I'm the most proud of is we had a bill dealing with literacy. Uh, we know that if you don't read at grade level and third grade, you are significantly less likely to be uh, a high school graduate and more likely to be on government benefits. So I think getting a, a good educated populace is a great thing. Um, we had uh, some things that got across the assembly but still haven't get, yet gotten uh, through the state senate. One of those we did over-the-counter birth control. I want to reduce the number of abortions so having more access to birth control I think is a great thing for Wisconsin. Uh, we actually had a bill on processing ballots on Monday so that we have you know no late night ballot dumps things like that. So hopefully those get through the state senate um, we have some bills that will be introduced in the spring um, some of those were unfortunately vetoed by governor evers or at least a version of it remember we had two different tax cuts one that was across the board another one that was just focused on the middle class the governor vetoed both of those so we have way too much money in the state's till um, we already did a pretty good increase for things so i don't want to spend most of the money it should go back to the taxpayer so we're going to have a, a tax cut that comes out in january which really focuses on retirees to try to keep more of uh, people um, who who are of retirement age dealing with a fixed income and all the inflation brought on by President Biden's policies to try to make sure they have more money in their pocket. So hopefully that'll be a win. Um, we also know that there are our speakers task forces, uh, which of course have been working their way through the process. We have one on childhood obesity, another on truancy, another on um, making sure we deal with human trafficking, and then lastly on AI. So I think each of those bipartisan task force will have new ideas to bring forward. Um, we, of course, have our UW deal, uh, which I think was great that we found a consensus. So part of that is, you know, the regions did their part by adopting the changes to DEI. Uh, we now have to do our part, which is to ensure that we have a reciprocity bill to uh, spread the money out around the system, that we have the new revenues uh, for buildings, uh, and then lastly, that we have the guaranteed admission criteria uh, for anybody who's in the top 5% of their class to be automatically admitted to UW-Madison or the top 10% automatically admitted to any of the other UW schools. So I think a lot of wins um, with lots more to go. Yeah, so you've had a little bit of a tumultuous relationship with the governor, especially during COVID. Sure. I remember. Um, how's that been this past year? You know, it's really no different. So, uh, you know, one of the things that I've learned in this job is there are certain things you can change and there are a lot of things you can't. Um, the legislature, if you look at every single bill that came through, 
from the alcohol compromise, the Brewer Stadium, shared revenue, literacy, all of those were legislative products that the governor ultimately signed. He had no real hand in them. He wasn't involved in negotiations. He really wasn't, you know, at the table trying to find a consensus, but he signed them in the end. So other governors were much more hands-on. You know, Governor Walker met with us every week and was involved in the legislative strategy. From what I understand, Governor Doyle and Governor McCallum, Governor Dreyfus, all did the same thing. Governor Evers is very much hands-off. Um, he is more of an absentee governor that comes in, signs the bill, which he deserves credit for. So I'm glad that he does that when he does. But he's not really engaged in the negotiations to try to get a product done. Um, I've been dying to ask you about this, too. Uh, you've made some trips overseas yeah, uh, this yeah, yeah. past year. Uh, Belgium, I think Ireland as well. Um, you think of uh, trade, for example, mm -hmm. being the U.S. Mm -hmm. negotiating with some of these countries, not necessarily Wisconsin. What role do we have as a state? Well, one of the bills that we're introducing, there is actually an Ireland Trade Commission that's being adopted by states all across the country. It's been introduced by some of my colleagues in Wisconsin. Um, believe it or not, if you look at the export market that we have in our state, it is hugely important uh, for our economy. Uh, we import an awful lot of things to Wisconsin, but we export an awful lot too. Everything from cheese to Harleys, uh, different products that are made in our state, and that creates thousands of good manufacturing jobs. So the more that we have an opportunity to take our goods to market, and frankly, to bring in goods here, to either have good suppliers or to be uh, part of a, a supply chain, uh, I think it's good for our state. So I want to have good relations with everybody around the world. I want them to look at Wisconsin as a place that if they're thinking about locating a North American headquarters, we're the first place they should come to. We have a great economy, we have amazing workers, and we have a pretty good tax climate that could be better, but we have a pretty good tax climate that makes an awful lot of companies want to come here. So every month we are seeing um, new businesses come here from somewhere and I think that's a good thing for our economy even though we need to do something to bring more workers and that's the biggest challenge we face uh, kind of on the workforce development front. When we come back, Janesville Congressman Brian Stile joined many of his colleagues this week on a trip to the southern border. We'll check in with him right after this. MG&E, building your community energy company for the future through the power of working together. Committed to cleaner, more sustainable energy, driven by innovation, fostered by shared values. Visit MGE2050.com. Hello, everyone. I'm giving this lamp away. I'm interested. Great. When can you pick it up? Hello? I'm interested. Can you pick it up today? Why did you message me? I'd be interested. Are you though? Yeah. You bring lamp to me. <sighs> Save yourself the hassle of selling stuff online and donate it to the Salvation Army instead. Now accepting donations at our new Madison location, opening this February. To everyone who appreciates a handcrafted meal, are you ready for a taste of Wisconsin? Butterburgers cooked fresh, just the way you like. The way you love. Definitely love. And our thick and creamy frozen custard, we make it for you all throughout the day. All day. All day, every day. Put it in the extra work and not cutting corners. It takes a little longer. But it's how we've always done it at Culver's. Because making your meal with care shows how much we care. From Wisconsin with love. Welcome to Delicious. A logo can do more than identify your company. It can connect in meaningful ways, energize your team, and inspire your customers. We're for Imprint, and we know your logo on the right product can create moments that matter. With 30 years of experience and thousands of products to choose from, we guarantee your order will be right the first time, on time, and for a great price. Be certain that the right moments will matter. Explore thousands of promotional products at forimprint.com. For Imprint, for certain. MG&E, building your community energy company for the future through the power of working together. Committed to cleaner, more sustainable energy, driven by innovation, fostered by shared values. Visit MGE2050.com. Welcome back. It's a new year for politicians out in Washington, too, with a couple of key deadlines ahead for Congress. Work on the federal budget was punted to this year. And Congress has until January 19th and February 2nd to pass two different portions of the national spending plan. Now, at the same time this week, Wisconsin congressmen joined a group of representatives headed down to the southern border. That included Janesville Representative Brian Stile, who joins us now. Thanks so much for joining us. I want to first ask you, though, what was the origin of the trip down to the southern border? 
we know what a disaster the policies are that are leading to the massive amount of immigration coming in. I wanted an opportunity to speak firsthand to the men and women of law enforcement, in particular those officers on Customs and Border Patrol who are on the front lines. So we went to the epicenter of the illegal immigration challenges that we have, which is in Eagle Pass, Texas. There's an opportunity to really reinforce my understanding and knowledge that we need to secure the U.S.-Mexico border. We need to change the policies of the Biden administration and get things under control. It was just last month that we had 300,000 illegal immigrants enter the United States of America. And this is a problem not impacting just our nation's largest cities. It's impacting every community, including Whitewater, Wisconsin, right here at home. Uh, where a thousand migrants have moved into a community of 14,000 people and are really causing a big drain on resources, as well as some of the other challenges that the communities face, including drug trade, where over a quarter million dollars was trafficked to the Mexican Gulf cartel, as well as human trafficking instances that we've seen in that community. So the need to secure the U.S.-Mexico border is of absolute paramount importance. Yeah, so is there any room to work with the Biden administration on this at all? We really haven't seen the Biden administration be willing to change their policies. You got to remember on day one of the Biden administration, they stopped construction of the border wall. Not only was that a tactical mistake, but it also sent a signal across the globe that the U.S.-Mexico border is not secure. That began the wave of individuals coming across the U.S.-Mexico border that continues to this day. What we're trying to do is force the administration to enforce the laws on the books we continue to see an abuse of the asylum system, an abuse of the parole system. We need to reinstate the stay in Mexico policy. And if we do these things, we could dramatically stem the tide of the illegal immigration that we're seeing into the United States. So it seems like Republicans are willing to trade off some border security funding for Ukraine funding. Uh, why tie those two together? We need to have a leverage point with this administration to force them to change the policies that they're doing. This administration and, and all of us are interested in making sure we keep the government open and operational, but we have the power of the purse in Congress, and that is our greatest leverage with this administration, which is why we're having the conversation together, to make sure that we're securing the U.S.-Mexico border while we're working to identify the spending priorities of the country. So does that indicate any cooling of support among Republicans for Ukraine at all? I, I don't think that, that that is the driver. The driver is the power of the purse is about the only leverage point we have with this administration from Congress. We control one half of one third of the government with Republicans in the House of Representatives. It's our opportunity to leverage that position in the power of the purse to force the administration to change course as it relates to border security. So as you talk about the power of the purse, um, I know there are a couple of deadlines coming up. Are you concerned that we might face more talks of government shutdown if we miss these January and February deadlines? I remain concerned that we're coming up with another lapse in funding deadline in just a few weeks. There is no one who wins when the federal government shuts down. I'd like to see us keep the federal government open and secure the border. I think we can walk and chew gum at the same time, but we need the administration to truly come to the table and be willing to secure the U.S.-Mexico border and stem the tide of the massive illegal immigration that we've seen into the United States. Congressman Style, thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. And we know he is not the only one traveling this week. Dane County Congressman Mark Pokham is back in Madison, where we caught up with him at his office. Speaking of the border, do you have a comment about a Wisconsin congressman going to look, at, look down at the border? Did you see need of concern? about border security from Wisconsin? Yeah, I mean, I think what they should be doing is looking at the calendar. There's a January 19th and February 2nd, we could have a federal government shutdown unless we do something um, fiscally. That's like our 101. And if 60 Republicans want to get together in Texas or Maryland or Rhinelander um, to talk about that, that would be good. But if they're just going for photo ops and something that they didn't bother to fix when Trump was president, you know, I mean, look, it's a, it's a good issue for them, right, to talk about the border. If they can't do anything else, and so far I haven't been censured, you know, they got 433 of us to go, right? So they still got some time to get that done. You know, they can't do much right now. They're, they're so ineffective. And I think, you know, going down there is just continually showing how ineffective they are because they can't actually tackle the many things I mentioned that we have pending in the next 30 days uh, and instead. That's what they're talking about. We'll be right back after this.
are record energy costs putting a squeeze on your fixed or limited incomes. With inflation rising at record levels and incomes not keeping pace, you might be one of tens of thousands of Wisconsin residents who are struggling to survive in the blistering heat of summer or the bitter cold of winter. While you haven't asked for it, the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund and your local energy assistance providers are here to help. No Wisconsin resident should ever have to face the challenge of living without heat or power or face homelessness. For a hand up, apply today and call 1-800-506-5596. That's 800-506-5596. Or visit www.kwwf.org. I know what it's like to perform through pain. If you're like me, one of the millions suffering from pain caused by migraine, Nurtec ODT may help. It's the only medication that can treat a migraine when it strikes and prevent migraine attacks. Treat and prevent all in one. Don't take if allergic to Nurtec. Allergic reactions can occur even days after using. Most common side effects were nausea, indigestion, and stomach pain. Relief is possible. Talk to a doctor about Nurtec ODT. <laughs> Sickness can spread fast, but with Lysol, you can go into protect mode. For the things you touch, nothing kills more viruses on more surfaces than Lysol disinfectant spray. And when it comes to your laundry, adding Lysol laundry sanitizer kills 99.9% .9 of illness-causing bacteria detergents leave behind. Lysol, what it takes to protect. Welcome back. This is our first show of the new year, and it's an election year. Now, those 2024 questions are continuing to circulate about the validity of the 2020 election. We actually caught up with former state senator Kathy Bernier, who now works with a group called Keep Our Republic. It's working ahead of this fall's election to educate voters. Oh, yes. Uh, our work is not done. There are individuals going around this state still ginning up conservative voters, uh, primarily Trump voters, um, telling them all sorts of information that's not factual. And that is why I stepped up uh, back in 2021 um, to set the record state on the electoral straight on the electoral process because so much of the information is so wrong. That does it for us this week. I'm Will Keneally. Have a great rest of your weekend. This has been For the Record.